Hey y'all, welcome back to the Craft Castle. I decided to go live because I'm making one of these large foam cutouts and I figure we should just go live and chat it up while I make this. So I'm doing a really large monster truck right here. Look at that, that's so cute. 36 inches. So I use my really large format printer to print this. And then all I'm doing is trimming off all the excess just so it makes it easier to work with. All right, now that I have it all trimmed out, I'm gonna get one of my large self-healing mats. I don't even know why they call it that because it does not heal itself. I have no idea. And then I have some, my foam boards. This is 36 inches big, and these foam boards aren't as big as the 36 inches. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to line this up and I have some popsicle sticks and my hot glue gun already uh, heated up and see how there is going to be some like leftover right here that's going to hang off. I'm just going to glue a popsicle stick like this and then more foam board so it will all be sturdy. I like to do it on the bottoms where the, where the, like where the tires are because then I can hide it with the stands that I use. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some right here and some at the bottom. And I always use glue sticks for this because you don't want the paper to get too wet. If it gets too wet, then your paper starts to curl and then it starts to look really bad. So I do a really thick layer. Oh. And I apply very thick, a nice thick layer. And because this is glue, a glue stick, it's like a paste. And so even if you do it really heavy, it's not gonna get too watery and start curling your paper. I probably use, this is one of the larger glue sticks, and I probably use one glue stick, a little under one glue stick per 36 inch character. So I go through a lot of glue for this. Okay, I didn't do the entire thing. I'm just working in small little spaces. I'm gonna line this character up onto the mat. And I have my brayer, so I'm just gonna push down the printout onto the foam core. Okay, remember we have a little bit of carryover right here. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna glue that later. I'm gonna roll this back up just a little bit like this. Hold on. I have to do it on three sides. I gotta add three types of popsicle sticks. That's fine. Okay, roll this up. I'm 
I'm already gonna get the rest of this. So now I'm putting the glue directly onto the foam core. If y'all have any questions or anything like that, let me know. I can see my comments on my computer. I have my computer on so I can see the comments. I was having like a little bubble right here. So all I did was, is I lifted it up just a little bit so I could then pull the paper towards me and now there's no more bubble. Okay, hold on one second. I have some leftover pieces from another project. So I'm going to use that first before I cut over a different. All right. There is that. So I have lined up this foam piece straight up with the last foam piece, the full sheet. I'm going to take my hot glue. I'm going to put it on the back only of the hot of the stick. I'm going to sandwich these two together. And just to be safe, I always add one more So with every single joint, there's always two. And because I use thicker, heavier gloss paper, after this is done gluing, you actually can't even tell that there is sticks right here, which is great. So got another little piece. I'll put that right there. And this doesn't need a whole lot. It's just, I mean, maybe an inch and a half. So same thing. And I always push the stick far enough in that I could still cut away the excess because that's what I have to do here in a minute. And even though it's a small joint, I'm still going to add in a second one. Oh my goodness gracious. My extension cord is failing me. Alrighty, woohoo! My hot knife is plugged in and hot. Okay, now that I have that little section done, I'm just gonna go back in with my uh, glue stick. I'm gonna go over the sticks because you want that paper to be really glued on there, especially on those sticks, and then around them. There we go. And I always like to go with the glue. I always like to go past my excess line. I don't use the brayer for that. If you were to and get glue on the brayer, it will um, rub onto your design. So you don't want that. But then now that it's all, you can make sure that when you cut this, that the print is going to be stuck down there like it should. So I always just get a little messy around the edges, but don't use your brayer. Just use your hands and kind of push it down. Move my hot knife. The hot knife takes a minute to heat up, but when it's hot, it's hot. Don't touch it. There we go. Okay, same thing with this side. I'm just going to use a piece of excess foam that I have from a past project. This one, I'm probably going to use three sticks. 
like that. One more for the very top. And I'm only doing the hot glue on the back side where it's going down onto the foam cord board. Oh my goodness. Glue had already dried in a certain section of that truck, and it does not want to give way at all. Try this again. I'm going to make this shorter. Add more hot glue. There we go. Awesome. Now it's in there. Okay, adding more hot glue or more of the glue stick. Doing the same down here. Okay, now we're done. Ooh, look at how much I had used a fresh glue stick. This is almost the entire glue stick for one 36 inch character. So I do go through quite a bit of glue for this. Um, I've used a ton of different glues and tested a ton of glues. I strongly suggest glue sticks for this project. No other glue. Trust me, get a glue stick. This right here is super tight, super uh, school glue, but it's like, um, I don't know. It's better than Elmer's glue. It's so much stronger than Elmer's glue. I can't even begin to tell you how much better it is than an Elmer's glue stick. Okay, so here is the hot knife. It is hot, very hot. It'll singe your fingertips right off. Right now it's a little loose, so I have these pliers, and all I do is just go in and I tighten it all. And it does get loose over time, so I keep the pliers handy. So for... And then you should be done with your hot glue gun. So you don't need your hot glue gun anymore. Okay, all I'm going to do is just get a little messy right now. And I'm going to cut off and trim any of the excess foam just to make it easier to work with. I can tell you that when you're holding this knife, it's not natural the way that you want to hold it because you feel like you need better control. So you want to put your hand down onto the metal shaft. I'll repeat this. Don't touch the metal shaft. It is hot, very hot. smaller, more manageable sizes. I wish I had a larger uh, mat so I wouldn't have to be constantly moving this all the time. Let me see. Let me move my computer over here. Maybe that will help. If I could just get like a custom made mat that fit my entire desk, then I would not have to con constantly move this. Okay, 
So again, don't touch anything that's metal. So anything that's past this orange line, don't touch any of it. It is hot. I always hold it like, I don't know, what is this? Like a knife? Uh, not like a steak knife because you want to cut your steak like this. And it just slides like butter. I also suggest that you um, use a brand new blade, especially if you've done a few of them. You can tell when you need to replace your blade. It will start to like rip on the back side of this. So you definitely want to use like a fresh blade. I had just replaced mine on Monday and I've only done two characters since Monday. So this is my third character with this blade. Let's see, what printer do you use to make them? I have a Canon TA20, it's a 24 inch. I love it so much. You can print vinyl with it, uh, like heat transfer vinyl or the sticky vinyl. It's like a eco sol solvent. I love it. I personally love doing large canvas banners with it. You could do like the vinyls that you would get for like your business and stuff, but I love canvas and um, I actually have a really fun DIY coming up. I used I made a Grand Theft Auto banner for my son using the canvas for his birthday. But after I'm done, I'm going to DIY something. I'm gonna take out the pictures that I use and I am going to make um, my own uh, gallery wrapped canvas pictures out of them. Okay, and you don't need a whole lot of pressure. Because this is a hot knife, it's already burning through the styrofoam, so you don't need a whole lot of uh, pressure for this. It does help that you have if you have a very sharp knife. There we go. I have heard somebody tell me to get a glass cutting board but because this is so large of characters that I'm always doing I'm having a tough time locating a cutting board that's glass that will accommodate for this I mean this one right here is 23 by 17 this is a large self-healing mat and I need it bigger than that so I have heard that if you got a like a glass cutting board to do these on those and it'll help with the cutting process. I always get you, me. I always just take my extras and just like splash them down on the ground and decorate my floor. And then on Fridays, when I'm done working on Fridays, I always just sleep up my floor. So by the time Friday hits, it looks like a dumpster on my floor. Okay. This little tight area of our already cut but it doesn't want to cut all the way through so I push it I bring it forward to where it's hanging off a little bit and I just take my knife and I go in there and it's the corners that didn't uh, cut all the way and then it just falls off so you just want to put your knife in there and keep burning the colors you mentioned you want a big clap oh yeah I do want a big glass cutting board I cannot find one there is a gal that is in California and she went to a Tuesday morning, which is a store, and she was able to find a glass cutting board that was like 40, 24 by 48. Uh, I think it was American Crafts brand. 
I went to my Tuesday morning and it wasn't there. And I think she spent like $40 on it or something. It was like super cheap, the one that she found. So check your local Tuesday morning. I, I checked mine. And it, they didn't have it. Actually, my Tuesday morning did not have much of a craft area at all. I think maybe they had a couple craft tools in there. It's terrible. My Tuesday morning is terrible. All right. Doing the wheels of a monster truck is honestly the hardest part. Once you get past the wheels, I generally leave the wheels for the very last because they are so time consuming to do. I mean, all these like, I guess you could just go around, but I like to cut out the, like the treads of the tire. There we go. Woo. This knife is gets so hot it heats up my craft room. So I just take my pliers now that they're a little bit loose. There we go. Just tighten it up a little bit. almost done going around these tires. The treads of the tires, again, is the hardest part of this entire project. Okay, now that I've done this and I've cut away all the excess, there's this right here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but it is like lipping just a little bit. That means I didn't use enough glue right there. So I'm just going to add, like flip it up. Don't bend the paper, just kind of roll it up, put a little bit of glue down and then restick it. right here it's flipping up just a little bit got a little kid up hey big what's up oh don't come in here you don't have a shirt on i'm live you don't have a shirt on good morning dad went to go get a massage so it's just you and your sister down there okay, okay? i'll be done here in a little bit okay. i love you the end of summer 9 30 soon there'll be no more sleeping in in this house all right the most time consuming part is over got all the Tire treads done. There we go. 
it's like butter when you do a, a long good strokes like that it just cuts like butter There we go. Oh man, I have one more tire left to do right here. <laughs> Bummer. I got one more tire. So the hard part isn't over. to the wheel and then we'll be done. Hey, Big! That's so cute. He was just up here. I told him he could not come in here because he didn't have a shirt on. And now look at him. Good morning. Morning, Teresa. It's a whole family gathering. How exciting. All right. Cut that in there. Okay, so for this, for this large one, I always leave these inside pieces white. I don't cut them out. The reason for that is because it's a pain in the butt, but if you cut too much out from the center, you could make it a little bit like structurally not okay. So for something that big, do you have to make your own stand? Okay, so this is what I have. Next on this, now that we're done and we're cutting this off, we are done with this hot knife. I get these off Amazon right here and they're little easel stands. I don't put, because I'm going to ship this, I'm not going to put this down. But if you bend this forward like this and then this goes down, it'll, it'll stand up on its own. There's stickers right here. I never peel off this middle part. Um, I do also have more of a, like a full how-to on this, and I link this and show you exactly what I do with it, but really, it's like, it's brainless. It's so easy. So I just peel off these two. Because I'm shipping this, I don't push this flap down. The reason for that is because if you do, and then you push it back up, it doesn't look cute. So I always stand up the cutout the way it's supposed to look. And then I just take my stand and I lean it up to the back. See, it's standing up on its own. And I really haven't even put the sticker down. So just standing this up and I'm, now I'm pushing it down. And there it is. So when you push this little flap down, it will be a little bit more sturdy. So it won't be so loose like this because this is really loose. But like I said, when you undo that flap, it ends up looking really ugly. So I just leave it for the customer to do. But otherwise that, this is now a finished cutout. I have to fix the back just a little bit. But it stands up on its own. That's it. Because this character, oh, it's so big. Because this character has like four wheels, right, essentially, one's already on the bottom so i am going to use like a smaller wheel 
um, or a smaller easel for the back of this, the smaller wheel, but for the big one, I used it on this one right here. And I always place them in areas that you won't be able to see, or at least try to. There's two th things with this. So the seams that are right here, because the foam board was too big, or the cutout was too big for the foam board, I like to place my easels in an area where you can't see the seams, if possible, just so you can hide the ugly. That's what I always say. I like to hide the ugly. But the other thing, too, is I like that you can't be able to see it behind the cutout. Do you see that? Now, not all characters are going to be like that. Some characters are a little bit harder to hide seams or, like, if you have legs. I have a woody that has really thin legs and it's really hard for you to be able to see his, uh, to hide his stand. So then just stand him up, make sure it's on an even field so you know where exactly to put the stand. So these easels come in multiple sizes. I have them all, every single size I order them. Here we go. Once you have them down, push them down, and then you can stand them back up, readjust them to make sure that they are exactly where you need them to be. And then that's it. So now I have one stand on one, one stand on the other. There we go. Okay, so shipping these is not cute. Uh, I don't do anything amazing. My whole theory on shipping items is we're trying to get it there safely, not cutely. So I always wrap this up, this particular thing, up in packing paper, and then I smush it between two really large and um, thick moving boxes that I get at Lowe's or Home Depot. And I always flip them inside out so it's just cardboard on the outside, and then I tape it up. But because I use the heavy, uh, the heavier grade shipping or moving boxes, there's no give on these. So not cute at all but functional and they always arrive alive versus bent up and crappy all right y'all i will see you later